Good evening, Merry Christmas, and welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer and reflection for December the 28th, the feast, feast day of the Holy Innocents. If you'd like to follow along, evening prayer begins on page 117. Yours is the day, O God, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light. We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 19 and 126. The heavens proclaim the glory of God, and the firmament shows forth the work of God's hands. Day unto day takes up the story, and night unto night makes known the message. No speech, no word, no voice is heard, yet their span extends through all the earth, their words to the utmost bounds of the world. There God has placed a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom coming from his tent rejoices like a champion to run its course. At the end of the sky is the rising of the sun. To the furthest end of the sky is its course. There is nothing concealed from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold. And sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. So in them your servant finds instruction. Great reward is in their keeping. But can we discern all our errors? From hidden faults acquit us. From presumption restrain your servant, and let it not rule me. Then shall I be blameless, clean from grave sin. May the spoken words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart win favor in your sight, O Lord, my rescuer, my rock. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our lips there were songs. The heathens themselves said, What marvels the Lord worked for them! What marvels the Lord worked for us! Indeed, we were glad. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage, as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Sing, O barren one, who did not bear. Break forth into singing, and cry aloud, you who have not been in travail. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Hold not back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess the nations and will people the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be ashamed. 
Be not confounded, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your Maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing wrath for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of agate and your gates of carbuncles and all your, your wall of precious stones. All your sons shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the prosperity of your children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I hope that everyone is having a joyful and merry and relaxing Christmas. We're still in the season of Christmas. It began just a few days ago, December 25th, and we are in this very sort of special time after Christmas. There are three feast days that happen right after the Christmas holiday, and they are the Feast of St. Stephen, the Feast of St. John, the Apostle and Evangelist, and the Feast of the Holy Innocents. And the tradition of the church has a sort of great explanation around why we have these three major feasts right one after the other. The first is St. Stephen, the first martyr of the church, the proto-martyr of the church. And he was a martyr in will and in deed, which means that he chose to follow Christ and gave up his life in witness to the gospel. That was St. Stephen. The next day we have St. John, St. John the Apostle and the Evangelist. And he was a martyr in will, but not in deed. By tradition, the church says that he was, one of, he was the only one of the apostles not to meet the death of, of a martyr. He died of a natural old age, and he still was a witness to the power of God the power of the gospel. And so he was a martyr in will, but not in deed. And today we have the feast of the holy innocents. That's the children in Bethlehem whom Herod sought to kill when he was afraid of the news of Jesus' birth. He had the innocents in Bethlehem slaughtered. And they were martyrs in deed, but not in will. They were children. They were infants. They had no choice in the matter. They were just killed. And so we have these three examples set before us of the kinds of witness that the church says, thanks be to God for all of them. That might sound a strange thing to say thanks be to God for the holy innocents because they were martyred in deed but not in will. But I think that the reason why the church observes and gives thanks for the holy innocents in Bethlehem is that it shows the depths of evil in the world that Christ came to save. Some scripture scholars say, oh, there's no chance that the, the, the biblical account actually took place and that, that children were killed in Bethlehem at the time that Jesus was born. Fair enough, but we do know that Herod did have children slaughtered. We know that. That is an established fact. And there are tyrants, there are despots throughout the course of history who did not balk at killing children. There are tyrants, there are despots throughout the course of history who have not hesitated to do some of the most atrocious things to maintain their grip on power, to maintain their uh, fearful grasp on power. 
That is the kind of world into which our Lord came. That is the kind of evil that our Lord came to overthrow and to redeem. And to think that we're out of that kind of world, that we're no longer faced with those kinds of atrocities is, is somewhat naive. I would say that the world still throws at us on a daily basis examples of innocents who are sacrificed, who are eliminated, who are abused in order to maintain the power of those who are afraid of losing their power, their authority, their control over other people. And so the message of the gospel, as relevant as, relevant as it was 2,000 years ago when our Lord was born, is still incredibly relevant today. That the message of the gospel, that our Lord, that God wants us to be agents of the salvation of those innocents. That we can have a role in saving those who need saving. That we can play our part in making sure that the kind of world in which the powerful crush the weak is not the status quo, is not standard. We can, ha we can take our part in that. And so the Feast of the Holy Innocents comes along to remind us that it's not just the, the sort of the grand heroes of, of ancient days who did mighty acts in the service of God who are our um, exemplars. It is also the Holy Innocents, those who lost their, have lost their lives for no reason other than the blind, aggressive searching and seizing after power that afflicts so many of us. The Holy Innocents remind us that we can play our part in making sure that that kind of dynamic does not continue in the world and that and we can do our job to spread the gospel and to make sure that the birth of Christ continues to have its effect in redeeming and saving the world from such ugliness. We continue with the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has come, he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. 
we entreat you, O Lord, that we, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Innocents, and all your saints, entrusting one another in all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. We remember today, O God, the slaughter of the holy innocents of Bethlehem by King Herod. Receive, we pray, into the arms of your mercy all innocent victims, and by your great might frustrate the designs of evil tyrants, and establish your rule of justice, love, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. This time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the joy of Mary and Joseph be with you this season. May the wonder of the shepherds be with you this season. And may the perseverance of the wise men be with you this season. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>